Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another video in this big O mini-series. In this video, we're going to attempt to solidify our understanding of O log n algorithms by creating our very own binary search function. If you're new here, please take the time to watch my video on O log n, which is the third video of this mini-series. Also, if you are unfamiliar with what binary search is, I have a video explaining binary search as a concept which you can access by clicking the link that is currently displaying on the screen. If you've been following along with this series, then there's nothing that you need to do to continue with this video. But if you have not watched the previous episodes of this series, you will need to install Node.js. I explained the installation process at the beginning of a previous video of this series that can be accessed by clicking the link currently displaying on your screen. And without further ado, let's get started. So let's just start by creating a file and we can call it login.js. So just a quick recap, in a previous video, we implemented a linear search algorithm, which has a time complexity of O of n because we had to search through every element in an array in the worst case scenario. With binary search, this is not the case, but there's a catch. For binary search to work, the array that we're searching must be in either ascending or descending order. So you can't just have a randomly ordered array and use binary search on it. So that's just something to keep in mind throughout the rest of this tutorial. Our binary search function is going to take in four arguments. It's going to take in an array, and the array is just going to contain integer values, which will need to be ordered. So we will just do one through eight. We'll also need to pass in the first index of our array to the function. We'll just call it start. And that's just going to be zero. And we'll need to take in the last index of our array, which we'll just call end. And we can get that by getting the length of the array and subtracting one from it. The reason we need to subtract one from the length of the array is because the indexes of the array are actually zero based, but the array itself, the length is actually not zero based. It's just going to be the number of elements in the array. So the array length is going to be eight, but the last index of the array of length eight will be seven. So that's why we subtract the one. And then last but not least, we'll need to take in a target value, which is the value that we're searching for. And we're going to just search for eight. And then we can start building our function and we'll just call it binary search. And it'll take in the array, the start, the end, and the target. And this function is actually going to be a recursive function. So if you're not familiar with recursion or you're not comfortable with it, I actually have a video that helps you to visualize recursion, which I will link at the top of your screen. So to start this function off, we need to find the middle index of our array. So you'll notice that we're using a built-in function math.floor here. And the reason we're using this is because if we go to the definition, it says that it returns the greatest integer less than or equal to its numeric argument, which basically just means that if this di division expression within our parentheses, within our function parentheses returns something like 5.5, the value assigned to mid would only be 5, because we don't want to take into consideration anything after the decimal point, because we just want to find an index, which of course there wouldn't be an index 5.5, so therefore our mid would just be 5. And the next thing we would want to do is check to see if our midpoint is actually the number that we're searching for, which is our target. So this would basically return true if the mid value of our array is actually the target that we're looking for. So we're returning true because that means that the value that we're searching for exists within the array and we would be done here. And actually I just realized I might actually be confusing you guys by referring to our mid and our mid value interchangeably. So this mid here is actually the index of our mid, which is what we're trying to get. We're trying to get the index. So here we can just add index as well. So when I say our mid, I'm actually referring to the value. So we actually want to return true if the value that's at our mid index is equal to our target value. So if the value at our mid index is not equal to our target, we then want to go on to check to see if the value at our mid index is greater than or less than our actual target. So. And 
and actually this should be mid index sorry about that and actually we have another error here so to be till start and then target should be here and that should work so yeah let's take the time to understand what's happening in this line of code here so if the value at mid is greater than our target, then that's going to mean that our target is actually in the left side of the array. Because if we look here and we take into consideration that five is going to be our mid in this situation, in the first execution of this function, five is going to be our mid. And if five is greater than the number that we're searching for, then that means the number that we're searching for is going to be in the left side. Because if five were, if the number that we're searching for were greater than five, then it would be in the right side of the array because our array is in ascending order. So this is to check to see if the item that we're searching for is in the left side of the array. And if it is, what we're going to do is we're going to pass in our start, which is going to remain the same. So we're gonna keep the same start which is going to be, in this case, it's going to be index zero. And then our end is going to be mid minus one. Minus one because we're going to actually do away with our actual current mid. And actually, wow, this should be mid index as well. We only need to assign the current mid minus one to our end variable because our next execution of the function would have this as our end and then this as our start. And therefore we'd only be searching one, two, three, four, which we would then in turn find the mid for one, two, three, four, and then we would do the same thing. So now what would happen if the target value that we're searching for is greater than our mid value? Well, let's see. So in this particular case, the target value would be less than our mid. So that would mean that the target value would be in on the left side of our array. But if that were not the case, then if our target is larger than our midpoint, then we would do something like else return. So we're still going to, the function's still going to call itself, of course, but this time we're going to pass in the array the, the array and instead of passing in the original start point we're going to be passing in the midpoint mid index plus one and that's going to be our new start point and this is because we're starting from the midpoint to the right side of the array because the actual value that we're looking for is in the right side of the array and then at this point our end can just stay the same because the end is just the end of the array so let's let's have a look at this again. So so let's again pretend that for this execution our mid is five and but this time the actual value that we're searching for is greater than our midpoint. So that means that it can't be on this left side because everything on the left of our midpoint is gonna be less than because our array is in ascending order. So it's going to be on this right side. And if it's greater than our midpoint, then of course we don't need to take five into consideration, which is why instead of doing mid index and end, instead of returning mid index and end to the function, we only need to return mid index plus one, which is going to be this index here. It's going to be index, it's gonna be this value six at the index, one index above our actual mid. Now at this point, we're only searching our end and our mid plus one, and we're only searching these three elements in the array. That's what both of these conditions cover. So this first condition covers if the item is to the left of our mid, which is over here. And the second one covers if the item that we're searching for is in the right of our mid. And this is how binary search works. This is why binary search is more efficient than say linear search, because we don't need to check every element in the array. We can actually essentially eliminate half of the array by knowing whether or not the item that we're searching for is less than or greater than the midpoint. So let's go ahead and see if we can actually run this function and get it to work. And I'm gonna tell you right now, we're going to try and run it twice. We're going to try and run it searching for the actual value that we know that's in the array, and we're going to try and run it searching for a value that's not in the array. And you'll see that we're missing something in this function. So let's go ahead and try and run it now. To run it, obviously we have to invoke the function. So we'll go binary search, and we're going to pass in array uh, start, end and target 
and we're going to save that. So we will try and run it by just using node login.js. And we broke it. Nice. Forgot to add in the target here, so it caused the entire function to fail. Let's see. Let's try it again. Okay, so let's see what happens if we actually return the value. I mean, console log the return value of the function. And we get true because 8 is found within the array. But what you'll see here is if we search for something that doesn't exist within the array, we're going to break it again. So 10 does not exist. So let's try it again. And we got maximum call stack size exceeded because let me show you what it means maximum call stack size exceeded. So what we're doing is every time we don't meet this condition true, we're going to call a binary search again, which is we're calling the, the functions recursively calling itself again. And if we're if we're searching for a number that doesn't exist within the array, binary search is basically going to keep calling itself recursively. And there's never going to be a point at which it stops. Even if it doesn't find the item within the array, it's still going to continue to recursively call itself until eventually we reach the maximum call stack size, which is basically you, you've exceeded the amount of memory allocated to this particular application. So to solve this issue, what we want to do is we want to add a base condition that will stop the function from recursively calling itself after it's checked the entirety of the array. So we can do if start is greater than end, then return false. So the reason why this works is because if the target's not in our array, it either means that the target is larger than the largest value in our array or it's smaller than the smallest value in our array. So that means our function will keep checking our array until eventually we get to either the largest item if the target is larger than the largest value in the array or it gets to the smallest item if the target is smaller than the smallest item in the array. And at that point, the start and the end values will be equal. And at the point where both the start and the end values are equal, passing our start and our end to either this line or this line will in effect make the start greater than the end. And now we can run this again using this tin that doesn't exist within our array. And as you can see, we get false. And if we even added negative here, oops negative 10 doesn't exist so we get false as well and let's see what else can we try let's just try two we know two exists and then and we get true so let's change this back to eight to get a feel for why this function is o log in, let's actually let's go ahead and create a longer array here. So currently our array only contains these eight elements, and it's gonna be kind of hard to get a general understanding of the way that our input scales with such a small array. So we can go ahead and uh let's just just em empty out our array and we'll just create our own array so let's see so to create our own array we can just do for let i equal zero while i is less than 1024 i plus plus and then here for each iteration of i we can just do array dot push i and hmm let's think let's actually make i uh, one and then we'll make this uh less than or equal to and then after that we can console dot log our array and for now let's just comment this out and let's see 
Okay, so at this point we have a longer array, which will hopefully help for you guys to visualize how the input is scaling when I do some console log trickery here. So yeah, so we don't need to log this anymore. Just delete that actually. So we're creating a new array here and it's gonna be an array that has elements from one to 1024. And for the purposes of this example, I don't want us to find the element, I mean the item in the array. So we're just gonna change this to something that doesn't exist within the array. So we'll just put it like that. 100,000 does not exist within our array. And also the end, this is getting the end from this current array. So we're gonna to need to bring this down to after we create our full array. So this array is empty here, and then we're adding all of the values in this for loop, and then we get the end of the array. And the start, of course, can still be zero because it's zero. And also, we can go down here and delete till B. We don't need to console log this anymore because we're going to do another console log. So we're going to execute the function here, and then here is where we're going to try and make some magic happen. So for each call to binary search, like each recursive call, we want to not just recursive call the first call for the first call and each recursive call, we want to uh, log with the array that we're searching through is looking like. So in the beginning, it's the full array, which we just showed when we console logged it earlier. And then at each call to the function, the array is going to essentially be halved. So it's going to look something like, let's see, console.log. We'll do array.slice, and we're going to do the start and the end. So what that does is it's only going to show the parts of the race from the start to the end. It's not going to show the full array anymore. And let's see if that works. Let's see. So here we can do node login. Okay, and yeah, that worked. So uh, maybe I can make this smaller so you can see. So when I make it smaller like this, it's kind of easy for you to see like, well, at this point, the array is too long to show its entirety, but you can still see what's happening here. So like since the value is greater than the left side of the array, you can see that all of these lower values are going to essentially be eliminated and it continues to get halved and halved and halved. And here's where you can start to see visually what's happening here. Like you can see that it's the array is continuing to get smaller and smaller. If you remember from our linear search example, the actual input, we would essentially be iterating through every element. So it's actually quite difficult to explain um, O log in using console logs and just kind of trying to explain it by showing you the code. So if you haven't already, please take the time to go watch my video on O log in where I use uh, whiteboard visualizations for you to see the way O log in actually works internally by clicking the link at the top of your screen. And if this video was helpful to you, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.